The initiative process is simple. You gather enough signatures, you can get something on the ballot and allow people to vote. So is it gaming the system to allow people to vote on it? Why is that gaming the system? Because they might vote against your policies? This segment is brought to you by Eastside Weight Loss Clinic. I'm down 37 pounds on the program and I lost most of that in just two months. Do what I did and what so many other undivided viewers have done. Schedule your free 15 minute consultation today at eastsideweightlossclinic.com. We've got to check in on the opposition. We've got to check in on team insanity, team no common sense. Which is why we uh, were sent this podcast. It's an in indivisible podcast. Never heard of it. But it's a uh, popular podcast with progressives in Washington State. That's probably why I haven't heard of it. But anyway, um, they gave us an opportunity to go behind enemy lines to see what the arguments they're cooking up are against these initiatives. And I'll say um, they didn't disappoint. Their arguments are essentially what I thought their arguments were going to be. But I want to play for you. Here's how... Here's how confident I am that their talking points are terrible. I'm going to, on my much larger podcast, to my much larger audience, play for you some of the talking points from their podcast that are op about opposing the initiatives. And I'm going to lift those up and play them here on my show because I'm so confident that their talking points are so bad <laughs> that they're just going to completely fall flat. Uh, so here's the intro to this particular episode. Again, completely focused on what the progressive strategy is going to be for making sure voters reject these initiatives. By now, you have heard about the three GOP-backed initiatives on this November's ballot that are threatening to roll back important progress on things like the climate, health care, and equitable taxation here in the state. Our friends at Fuse Washington have been hard at work on messaging and strategy to help us defeat these measures. And here to talk about it are our friends Rosie Barber. She is campaign director with Fuse and Rainey Cohen, director of the Fuse Communications Hub. Hello to you both. How are you? Good. Hello. Good Super to be here. <laughs> All right, now you've met the cast of characters, so let's dive into this. And this was like 20 minutes of strategy. So again, behind enemy lines, let's see what they've got cooking up for us. That we oh, Should we be concerned? Do they have a really good game plan? Well, the first thing they started off with is how do we define? How are we going to try to label these initiatives? Let's talk first about how we want to brand these initiatives, because we know these GOP backers are calling their initiatives Let's Go Washington, which is kind of absurd on its face. So, Rosie, talk about how you would like people to refer to these initiatives as well as a campaign to defeat them. Yeah, thanks, Stefan. So as you mentioned, Brian Haywood's pack is called Let's Go Washington, which is kind of a play on words of the MAGA slogan, Let's Go Brandon. Um, oh, we, I hadn't put that yeah. together. Oh, they're so fun. Jeez. Yeah. Is that, do we have to keep going? Is that it's so fun? It's so fun. Is uh, is it a play on Let's Go Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, one of the things I really wanted to do is just put a montage together of all the times they said MAGA, because <laughs> mm -hmm. that is the central theme of their whole strategy to push back against these initiatives. Who knew Let's Go Washington was a, a, a spin on the phrase, let's go Brandon. Uh, let's keep listening in, shall we? So when we talk about the initiatives, we call them backwards initiatives because they aim to take us backwards and undo years of hard fought progress. Um, but the broader campaign is called Defend Washington. And that's kind of all about the fact that we all deserve to live in healthy communities and these deceitful initiatives would harm our health, our schools and our economy. Uh, and we know better than to fall for these lies. Um, so we're coming together to defend Washington and urge people to vote no on these initiatives so that we can protect our communities, um, the ones that we love and we've built here in Washington. Oh gosh, where to start? Um, I love that their like genius branding is bat. We're, we're going to call these initiatives backward initiatives. It's like that's not very good. Our <laughs> chant is much better. Vote yes, pay less. I mean, that's easy. Way better. Backward initiatives. What is that? What is and that? Years <laughs> of years of work and progress. No, these are no. These are not and new. that's the other thing is if if their plan is to try to say that these initiatives will hurt progress in the state, will take us back years. Um, you know, we'll, we'll make the state less safe, less affordable, or whatever it is. It's the complete antithesis about what all these initiatives have been about. I mean, one of the initiatives passed in the legislature, which was overwhelmingly popular and had bipartisan support, was to restore reasonable police pursuits. That's the kind of thing you do if you want to make the state, if you want to make the state safer. And if you want to make the state more affordable, as you're suggesting there, 
then these initiatives are what's going to do it. You guys have passed billions of dollars in new taxes in recent years. And this whole idea that it's going to take the state backward when you're talking about revenue streams that you just started collecting on a year ago is is ludicrous. All right, let's keep going. What more should we know about who's behind these initiatives? Oh, gosh. Yeah, so Brian Haywood and Jim Walsh are kind of the villainous dynamic duo behind these initiatives. Uh, <laughs> Brian Haywood is a multimillionaire Republican mega donor. Um, he's the main funder of these initiatives. Uh, he spent upwards of $6 million of his own money to get these initiatives on the ballot. Uh, and he's basically trying to buy himself and his wealthy friends a tax cut. And Jim Walsh uh, is the other one in this dynamic duo. He is the far-right Republican MAGA state party chair, and he is the prime sponsor of all the Backwards Washington initiatives. Um, and, you know, with a Democratic majority in the House and Senate here in Washington, uh, these two are basically trying to game the system through the initiative process uh, because Republicans can't win elections uh, there and they can't push their MAGA agenda through the legislature. Uh, they're using whatever means they have available to undo historic progress here in Washington. Oh, Lordy. Take a shot. How many times did she say MAGA in that one? I, got... I wasn't counting. Are shots of espresso, do they count? There you go. One. Two. Oh, it's... <laughs> That's too much. Three, three shots. So here's the thing. Well, that was all unhinged. But you notice she, they're just reading this from scripts. So they've got like their talking points. And they're sitting here reading these talking points, the same talking points that are, you know, being regurgitated by the state party chair and all of this. It's like, oh, mega this. He's an extremist. He's doing this for his rich friends. Republicans can't win elections. So they're gaming the system. How is this gaming the system? How is doing something very difficult be it, you know, initiatives and signature gathering. How is doing something very difficult that is allowed for under our state constitution that is a power the people in the state have, how is that gaming the system? Well, can someone explain that to me? You know, you had the House, uh, Speaker of the House, Lori Jenkins, who said it was really disappointing to see what the initiative process has become. What are you talking about? The initiative process is simple. You gather enough signatures, you can get something on the ballot and allow people to vote. So is it gaming the system to allow people to vote on it? Why is that gaming the system? Because they might vote against your policies? When you're doing those welfare checks. Uh -oh. Wait, well, Nicole. Well, that's not it. What happened? Nicole. You know, some days. <sighs> Nicole's fired. There you go. <laughs> okay, you got it? <laughs> Do you feel like we talk about the potential harm these initiatives would cause? Do we appeal to people's values? Both, neither, something else? I mean, it's all of the above. When you're talking about the harms, you are actually appealing to people's values, right? If you think about repealing the capital gains tax and removing or eliminating $900 million from schools and childcare and just like student enrichment, that's a value that we all hold. And the damage that, that, is, that this initiative is going to cause is going to hurt us in our values. And so, you know, we, we want to package our messaging as always with like, leading with that shared value, identifying who the villain is, in this case, Brian and Jim, um, and then our call to action, which is obviously vote no on all of these initiatives. So um, as long as we are identif educating our voters about exactly what these initiatives will do and the fiscal impact statement that will appear on the ballot will help articulate that, um, and then pair it with the fact that um, this is also that a wealthy man from California can get a tax break for himself and his rich Reading friends. Your lines. And Reading so that your Jim lines. Walsh can advance the mega agenda in Washington because they can't Shut. do it legislatively. Shut. Mm -hmm. Exceptionally well put. Articulate just as you've done our shared value. Talk about the villains in the equation and then give a call to action. Absolutely textbook. I love it. <laughs> you know what? I love it too. Because if this is the opposition, this is going to be a lot easier than I thought.